What's up everyone? It's the Law School Lumberjack. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to do another installment of our Corporations Law 101, also known as Business Organizations 101 series. And today we're going to take our first foray into looking at corporations. In this video, we will look at a very important characteristic of corporations, which is known as the separate legal personality. Now, I know that this video is going to be fairly short. In this video, we will go through a summary of the separate legal personality, and we will go through a brief case summary of the Solomon and Solomon case. This video is meant to be an introduction to corporations and the idea of a separate legal personality. It is not meant to be comprehensive, as I'm sure you may go into some topics in more detail in your law school course. So in previous videos, we went through sole proprietorships and partnerships, wherein the proprietors or the partners faced unlimited liability. The sole proprietorship and the partnerships were also a form of business arrangement that didn't create a separate legal personality or basically were business relationships that didn't involve separate entities. We also went through the difference between a limited partnership and a limited liability partnership. While those two relationships had something called limited liability, those two were business relationships and didn't create a separate legal entity. So unlike sole proprietorships and the various types of partnerships, a corporation is in and of itself a separate entity. So you can think of the corporation almost as another person. So like people, a corporation can hold property, enter into contracts with different entities on its own accord, and also sue and be sued in its own name. When it comes to corporations, the owners of the corporation are the shareholders. Now, one of the main reasons or one of the main benefits for shareholders in owning a company is that what a corporation essentially does is it insulates shareholders from liability. The shareholders of a corporation face what's called limited liability. And by that, I mean, as a general rule, the liability faced by shareholders is what they've put in to purchase the shares of a company. So for the ease of use, let's use an example. Let's say you buy $1,000 worth of stock in a company and the company goes bankrupt and it owes a bunch of creditors money, you as the shareholder may lose that thousand dollars worth of shares, but the creditors cannot come after you for whatever the business cannot pay. Now compare that to a partnership where you're one of the partners. If the partnership cannot pay the debts, the creditors can come after you. Now, I'm sure you've heard of shareholders, directors, and officers in passing. Now you might be wondering, okay, so shareholders are protected as owners of the company, well, what about directors and officers? So directors and officers liability will be discussed in a future video, but the directors and officers of a company generally are appointed or accept the position. And by taking on this role and the additional responsibility, these parties face significantly more liability than a shareholder would, both in their responsibility and their duties to the company. So generally directors and officers owe what's called a fiduciary duty to the company. Additionally, under most statutes, the directors and officers of a company are liable for certain prescribed debts and liabilities of a company uh, beyond that which a shareholder would face. Again, we're going to go into that in a different video. We'll do a video exclusively on directors and officers liability in the future, but just keep in mind that this idea of limited liability and this protection really applies to shareholders and there's additional liability faced by directors and officers. This idea of the separate personality and the limited liability faced by shareholders and the strength of that is really shown in the case of Solomon and Solomon Co. So the facts of the Solomon and Solomon case are as such. Uh, Mr. Solomon runs a boot making business. He starts this business as a sole proprietorship and decides to create a company, Solomon Co., for this boot making business. He transitions the business into the company. The company pays for the business or the assets of the business with both shares to Mr. Solomon and what's called a floating debenture or a floating charge over the assets. So essentially what this does is it makes Mr. Solomon a secured creditor. In other words, giving him first crack at the assets if he is unpaid. 
So essentially he has a priority position to any unsecured creditors, or in other words, any creditors who don't have a direct interest in the assets of the corporation. As you can expect, or as I'm sure you've read, the company does not do very well. It goes into what's called receivership. Now, the receiver takes issue with Mr. Solomon taking priority over all the unsecured creditors. The receiver essentially says that this business is a sham because Mr. Solomon, by virtue of him having these floating charges over the assets, basically takes all the equity out of the business and leaves the unsecured creditors high and dry. So what the receiver alleges is because this business is a quote unquote sham, Mr. Solomon should be responsible for the debts owed to the unsecured creditors as a result of Solomon Co. The Court of Appeal agrees with the receiver and holds that Mr. Solomon is personally liable for these debts. This matter is then appealed to the House of Lords who overturn that decision. The House of Lords hold that because Solomon Co. was a validly created company, the company is a separate entity, or in other words, it has a separate legal personality. This company can enter into agreements as it sees fit. It entered into the agreement out of its own accord with Mr. Solomon for these secured debentures over the assets. And as a result, Mr. Solomon was arguably entitled to be paid before the unsecured creditors. The unsecured creditors could make claims against the company, which was insolvent, but they could not make claims against Mr. Solomon. So what it, essentially what happens is the House of Lords create this protection for shareholders. By virtue of Mr. Solomon just being a shareholder of the company, he faces limited liability and is not liable for the debts and liabilities of the company. So as I said, this is just a brief summary of the case. It was just meant to give you an idea of how this idea of a separate legal personality really morphed into this idea of protection for shareholders. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Take care. See you next time.